What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to talk about Swift Package Manager, what Swift packages are and how to actually integrate them. So that said, make sure you destroy that like button down below. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so here we are, Apple's developer documentation website talking all about Swift packages. So it's a pretty lengthy page, quite a few links on here. Um, the high level is Swift Package Manager is a dependency manager uh, that's basically much more first party. Well, it is first party, unlike CocoaPods or Carthage or anything else you might have uh, heard of or used previously. So uh, the name implies, of course, that these are Swift uh, packages. Uh, it's baked into Xcode, how you can bring these packages into your project. And uh, the support for Swift packages, I think, is at a point where you can pretty much find all of the major frameworks and libraries uh, supporting Swift Package Manager. So uh, that's what Swift packages are. So this is their developer website. The other tab that I've got open here is pretty uh, important and interesting. So this is the Swift Package Index. So this is actually not made by Apple. This is an open source project. And as the name implies here, this is basically a listing and an index of a bunch of Swift packages that have been submitted to the index. So here on the website, you're met with this uh, search box and you can basically search for uh, just about anything in here. So we type in AL, we see Alamo Fire, uh, we've got Swifty JSON, uh, pretty much the popular things in here, Skeleton View, Swift Gen. Um, there's pretty much, let's see, Progress, is that in here? Progress, HUD, I guess not, but there are a bunch of different packages in here that have been submitted. And let me go ahead and select one. Let's go with Alamo Fire. And let's see what it gives us. So right off the bat, it gives you the repository URL here that we can copy. We're gonna need that for our demo in a minute. So let's hit copy. It gives you a description. It pulls this directly from GitHub, if I'm not mistaken. It tells you how long it's been in development, number of open issues, number of uh, pull requests, commits, uh, how many stars it has. Clearly, Alamo Fire is very popular, so it has quite a few. It also tells you things like the latest release on master, what uh, versions of Swift it is compatible with, as well as uh, things like platform compatibility. Uh, actually, very important, it tells you the license here as well, um, which is important so we don't get in trouble for using a lot of these uh, libraries. So. Most of these are in fact MIT. So here again on the main page, um, at the bottom here, we can see the ones that were recently submitted uh, to the index. So we've got localized string kit here, uh, uh, Cryptomator, Cryptolib, bunch of Cryptomator, SwiftUI charts. This is actually kind of interesting. I haven't heard of this one yet. But, uh, and on the right here, we also have uh, uh, the latest releases. So. Uh, pretty cool to come here and take a look at what's out there and available. Um, I, it would be really cool if they had like a way to list out the most popular ones. Uh, I guess they could just order whichever ones have been used the most. I don't know if they can track it, but let's go ahead and uh, do an example with Alamo Fire uh, using a Swift package. So we're going to come over here and we're going to, of course, start by opening up Xcode. And we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So we're going to do file, new, and project. We'll stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this Swift package example. We're not gonna actually run the app so your interface and all that good stuff is a little irrelevant for this video, but go ahead and create and save it. And let's talk about how to bring in a package. So like I said, Swift package manager and Swift packages is much more baked into Xcode since it is supported by Apple on a first party basis. 
for Cocoa Pods and Carthage, you, you would have to open up Terminal and uh, not do a lot of work, but it definitely wasn't uh, you know, as straightforward. So how do we bring in a package? We go to File, and in here we go to Swift Packages, and we can simply hit Add Package Dependency. So like super easy. Uh, in this box, it basically wants us to paste in our uh, repository uh, URL, which is why there's a copy button here. So uh, first and foremost, before we even do this, if we try to import something like Alamo Fire, clearly it's not there. So we're going to bring that in, and that's going to be our example. So Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency, go ahead and paste that in and hit Enter. It's going to go and try to fetch it, and it gives you this screen. And you can pick a version that you would like to basically resolve to. So you can say, uh, give me, basically keep, keep the version up until the latest major version. So when five goes to six, we want to make sure we keep five uh, or up until the next minor version. This is pretty useful because uh, as new versions of the library release uh, over time, you don't want your project to break. Um, you can also put in a range of what you want, right? The minimum and the greatest version you want to have Swift Package Manager bump it to. So very nice that it's baked in here. So let's just stick with that. Uh, you can also get a specific branch, which is pretty cool. So like if you're working on, um, let's say, a development branch, or uh, if you're an organization working on a person-by-person -person branch, pretty, pretty nifty. And of course, you can also pass in a commit hash, uh, a git commit hash, and get a particular version. So we're going to stick with up to next major, and we're going to go ahead and continue here. You can see that it's a resolving alamofire.git. And just like that, it basically finds alamofire. This icon notates that it's coming in as a static Swift library rather than a dynamic library. Kind is a library. It's, a, it's coming into the target. It'll be embedded into Swift package example, which is our project. If you had multiple targets, you would see it in this list as a dropdown. So we can go ahead and hit uh, finish, and we're pretty much done. That's, that's literally all it takes. So what it switched us over to, uh, so, so two things to call out. Firstly, Swift package dependencies. We can see we have Alamo Fire 522 down here. And also on our main project tab here, under the project, if you select it and go to Swift packages, of course, it is listed here as well. So if you want to get rid of it, you can just select it and hit the minus. And just like that, you'll be able to get rid of it. Super clean, super simple. So now if we go ahead and hit Command B, just to make sure we pick up those latest changes, we can come in here and simply import Alamo Fire. So I don't know if it gets much simpler than this. It's pretty, pretty easy. So let's just show you guys that we do, in fact, have Alamo Fire in here. We can go ahead and create an uh, Alamo Fire request. And we're going to go ahead and create it with a URL and a method. So let's say we wanted to create a post request to something like, I don't know, uh, api.google.com slash do something. Uh, this AF is coming from Alamo Fire. We can click into it. And uh, you can see the actual uh, path of this is alamofire.swift. That's under Alamo Fire source. Uh, this icon here actually also indicates that it is a Swift package. It's the same thing that you see here. You can, in fact, actually open this up as well, and you can see uh, the readme in here. So it basically downloads all the stuff you would get from GitHub um, directly in. So you've got your tests, your source, your example. Um, so pretty, pretty nifty, pretty easy to put together. And uh, once again, Swift package index is a really good resource to uh, not have to like scour GitHub for different links and different things uh, to support. Um, you can see it's indexing 3,256 packages um, as of today with 48,580 versions. So fully expect this list to grow over time, but once again, you'll find the majority of things you ever really need slash want in this list. Um, and there you have it. That's a quick look at Swift Package Manager and how to use it to bring in packages to your iOS project. If you haven't hit the like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me and the video and the channel out at large. Helps me make more content for all of you. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer, if you enjoyed and uh, found this video useful. Um, I think like 50% of you guys watch consistently but haven't hit subscribe. So definitely helps me out uh, with the channel. And lastly, comment down below with any questions, feedback, suggestions. 
uh, any, anything that comes to mind about Swift packages uh, or anything else, love hearing from all of you. And I try to reply fairly quickly uh, most of the time. So that said, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.